Hello everyone and thank you for tuning in to my one month review of Starlink. If you saw my last video on Starlink, you would know I was pretty excited about getting this and you might be asking the question, why is it sitting in a box next to me instead of up on the roof? So after having this for about a month and three different locations across the country, I'm gonna to try to help answer the question, is Starlink worth it for our viewers? And cover some of the big topics right now with the new price increase for roaming, as well as decreased speeds on roaming. And I think the biggest issue, which is trees. So my last video covered the unboxing and setup of the Starlink. This was in Tennessee around Memphis and the campsite we were at was pretty heavily wooded and there was just a small window of uh, open clear space that the dish was connecting to the satellites. And I had a lot of interrupted speeds there. So it was pretty fast connection, but it was uh, interruption from the obstructions on the trees. So it worked really well for streaming and light general um, internet use but if you had to do some heavy connection like zoom calls for work uh, it just wouldn't have worked in that scenario now we also have a verizon hotspot with a mimo antenna and the speeds in that tennessee location were very very good i think 40 ish megabytes per second down and the ups were around 10 so the Verizon worked really well but we ended up using the Starlink quite a bit there uh, both services so I was a little hesitant with how it was gonna work with all the tree coverage you know I was really excited about using it uh, in some national parks we have a trip planned to the Smokies and the sites there are pretty covered in trees so moving on to the next location, we kind of hightailed it over to central Florida and we were in the Orlando area. Now the particular RV park we were at had really good cell service with the Verizon and I think all the other networks, but what they also had was cell tower congestion. So it would work fine late at night, early in the morning, but kind of in the middle of the day in the peak times, it would almost crawl to a zero and you could not work uh, very well with that at all. And we all know the campground Wi-Fi that uh, Thousand Trails has, which is Java, is uh, it's just no good. So the campsite we picked out there, we sh made sure to pick it out with zero trees, and uh, this Starlink system worked phenomenal. We had zero obstructions. Uh, the uptime was almost consistent at 100%. The speeds, uh, on the other hand, were good. I mean, they were well over 100 megabits per second. But what's interesting, and I don't know how to exactly quantify this I guess but what's interesting is instead of getting 200 to 300 megabits it seemed like it was more cut in half around the hundred so uh, was it getting throttled because I was roaming and I should also mention uh, after leaving Tennessee or during Tennessee I moved our service address back to Minnesota and that's where it has been the whole time so roaming for sure has worked flawlessly and no issues with that so you may have heard the other day that Starlink has officially announced roaming. And of course, along with that announcement is a price increase. So now instead of it being $99 it was initially, uh, the first price increase was 110 for the monthly service. And now it's $25 per month if you want to keep the roaming on. Now you can still move your service address to the location you're at and not have to worry about roaming, but kind of the whole reason I got this system was for the roaming opportunity and not having to deal with uh, any of the issues as far as trying to find an open cell uh, with Starlink. So in Orlando, the Starlink worked flawless. I don't think it was at its top speed, but it was way faster than what we're used to on the road. And you can see here that uh, we actually moved it a little bit and the dish was underneath our bike rack and it actually worked flawlessly going through the bike rack. So it's kind of interesting how the obstructions work. It seems to be able to uh, figure out the small obstructions like right in front of it, like that bike rack. And it's more of the tall trees that really cause an issue. And so speaking of the trees, then we moved to another location in Florida. We did not have a choice of our campsite. And so we just got the one that they gave us. So I tried to put the dish on top of the roof and I would say the tree coverage was maybe about half of the skyline. And so I put the dish up on top of the roof, hoping it would find uh, satellites away from the trees that were right in front of it. 
and it took um, many, many hours for it to even connect up. And I was worried that it wasn't gonna find any satellite service at all. So I let it sit overnight. It ended up getting connection, so it was online, but this service was absolutely unusable. It was up and down, up and down, connecting, disconnecting. So, so it did not have usable service at all through these trees. So what I'm finding out now is that trees is a huge deal and a lot of the comments I got on my last video were all about trees. Oh, I like to camp in wooded areas. Obviously in the summertime you want shade. Um, so there's a lot of people that are not even interested in Starlink because of the trees and the areas that they camp in. We also have 1200 watts of solar on our roof. So we tend to park in open areas. So uh, that's another reason I'm not mounting my Starlink to a pole or to the roof or anything like that. I wanna be able to move this thing around on the 75 foot cable or even get the 150 foot cable. So some of the positives about the Starlink system, which I think are phenomenal, was the ordering was extremely simple. We ordered over on the West Coast. We had it shipped to Tennessee. Our service address was also on the West Coast and setup, installation, uptime. I mean, it was very, very simple to do. And again, in Orlando, when it was working flawlessly and our Verizon cell towers there were overcrowded, which this was a big campground too. There's over a thousand sites there and most of them did not have usable internet at all. I did see a few Starlinks being put up while I was there. So this is getting more and more popular and I'm starting to see Starlink popping up uh, left and right on social media. So more and more people are getting these, especially full-time RVers. It is a really great option to have. Thankfully, the location we're at right now, the Verizon is also very, very good. So we're just using our hotspot, but it's still kind of sad that you're paying, you know, well over $100 a month for this Starlink service and we're not even using it. So to really answer the question, is it worth it for me or us, me and my wife? Yes, I think it is. We work and live full time remotely on the road. So having another option with high speed internet is worth it to us. But as I mentioned before, we made it by just fine with our Verizon hotspot for over three years. So I can see why a lot of people aren't jumping on this right away um, because it's it's not an all-in-one solution. It's in addition. So a lot of people are having a Verizon SIM, maybe an AT&T SIM, and then throwing on Starlink. Um, internet bills are gonna get very, very high, but when you're working remotely and you need to have that connection, uh, then it's great to have just one more option. And again, the remote possibilities of this uh, being out in the middle of nowhere, when we're out west boondocking or even being in national parks, I think it's gonna be great to have that option. And uh, hopefully when we're in the Smokies, it can get a little bit of a connection because there's absolutely zero cell service in there. We're really, really excited to see uh, the more and more places we can use this at, but it's all things you gotta consider with uh, the new price increase, decreased speeds for roaming, and I think the big one, which is trees, which may not even allow you to use this at a lot of places that you camp. So thanks for watching this quick update on our Starlink system. I'll keep uh, monitoring it and recording some new updates as we continue to use it. And thanks again for watching. Catch you on the next video.